Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online series 8 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we're trying out a really interesting team featuring Dragonite, Zacian, and Colossal, as well as a Suncor. We haven't used Zacian yet on this channel. Originally I was going to feature kind of the classic Zacian Lapras core, and that will be coming up in the upcoming week. Uh, but I saw this team pop up on my Twitter feed, and I thought it was really interesting because uh, it features a really, really interesting Dragonite set. As you can see, this Dragonite has safety goggles and Aqua Jet, so the idea is to enable weakness policy Colossal. We all know how good Colossal is. We saw how dominant it was, you know, in the previous series, and it continues to be a strong threat in Series 8. And Dragonite's a really interesting partner. We didn't get to see Dragonite partner up with Colossal, you know, too frequently. Uh, but this combo is one in which, like, I think often you can even catch opponents off guard because some people just don't know that Dragonite gets access to Aqua Jet. Uh, in addition, you see that there's safety goggles here. So the safety goggles is really helpful against Amoongus because typically people will want to beat Dragonite uh, or, you know, redirect that Aqua Jet away using a Rage Powder. Uh, Dragonite with that safety goggles can ignore that. Also ignores Fake Out with Inner Focus. Uh, and so it's actually relatively easy to get that Aqua Jet combination off. So you have a bunch of obvious duos here, Dragonite plus Colossal, Torkoal plus Venusaur. This Venusaur is pretty interesting because it's actually triple offense, Life Orb with no Sleep Powder. I think often though, when players play against Venusaur, they kind of have to respect that Sleep Powder potential. So in best of one, you could utilize that to your advantage, knowing, hey, I don't have Sleep Powder, but my opponent has to respect it, so I can just play and go on the offensive. Uh, Torkoal Venusaur has been very, very good since the start, continues to still be very dominant. And yeah, the Torkoal set here is pretty interesting uh, as it features the Focus Sash and Yawn. Uh, Yawn I think has definitely been a little bit underplayed in recent weeks slash months, so I think it's cool to see that on this Torkoal set, and with that Focus Sash, you're almost guaranteed to get a Yawn off, especially against like a potential Dynamax threat, for example, because very rarely do people end up, you know, doubling up into Torkoal. And then to round out the team, you've got Classic Grimstar with the Lagging Tail set. You know, we just used the uh, Dual Screen set. Both of them are still really viable. These were sets that we saw back in Series 7, but continue to be very dominant. Uh, Double Thunder Wave on this team is pretty interesting as well. Really helps you slow down some of those faster restricted Pokemon. And then finally, Zacian with that Substitute. Uh, substitute Zacian is really common, and it is probably one of the best users of Substitute in this format, especially because it can't Dynamax. Uh, and so you can really create these endgame scenarios where Zacian outspeeds the opposing Pokemon and also just does a ton of damage. So this was created by a Japanese player. I think someone retweeted the team. I thought it was really interesting, so I wanted to try it out. I'll link their Twitter and their uh, rental, as you see on the screen, but also down in the description below. So credits to them for the team, and let's get started with today's episode. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. If you enjoy, please share your support by leaving a like. And question of the day, I want to know what you think is currently underrated in Series 8 one week into the format. Let me know in the comments section below. I think that... You know, I, we've already played with a bunch of the restricted Pokemon, and I'm doing my best, at least for the first couple teams on Rotrank, to feature a bunch of different restricted Pokemon, because I already think, like, you know, around 10 of them are, like, very good in the current metagame, and then the others are just kind of underexplored. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, a week ago in my preview video, I do think, like, you can build a pretty solid team around most of the restricted Pokemon in this format, and so, yeah, I think that, um... There is a lot of potential, and right now players are just exploring, you know, some of the stronger options, but generally, uh, you can really make a lot work here. So, let's see what we find in our first game of today's episode. I, I think that Zacian's a really interested restricted pick, because obviously it does a ton of damage, but you do have to assess how to play with it, i.e., do you want to bring it up right away and put on pressure against your opponent, or do you want it as a late-game sweeper? Both of them definitely have merits, and I wouldn't say there's one correct answer, because it is dependent on your opponent's team. And so it's going to be Evil Tall for the first game today. This, I actually think, is the perfect game for uh, Dragonite plus Colossal. I, think, I guess the only thing that scares me here is going to be the Heatran. Like, should they lead Heatran, they can obviously just max Quake us. But then I suppose Colossal can max Quake in return before it gets an attack off. So I like that. I, I think it's Dragonite, Colossal. Um, I guess Torkoal Venusaur works here, right? Because we do have um, Earth Power on this thing. But, I don't know. Would I really not bring Zacian? Like, Zacian feels so good here. Um, okay, I, I think I'm gonna wa I, I want to bring Zacian here. And for the last one, I think regular Venusaur, even without Sun, is actually pretty compelling. Yeah, it does pretty good damage here across the board. Torkoal is only getting Fire-type damage off, which is good against Amoongus, but otherwise, meh. And, oh yeah, uh, Colossal can actually even set up the Sun for Venusaur. That's another cool thing about this team. So, okay. Um, ideally, we get the policy going. Ideally, they lead Amoongus, and the safety goggles comes up huge for us here. Uh, like, if they lead Amoongus Evil Tall, we're in such a good spot, because I can just Aqua Jet, uh, Vocalit, turn 1. 
Well, actually, I suppose the thing about Amoongus is that I probably wouldn't want to Aqua Jet turn 1. In fact, if it were against Amoongus, I'd probably dual wing beat Vocalit just to try to beat the uh, Focus Ash. Because otherwise Amoongus can just spore Colossal. I, I don't think you'd ever really lead Amoongus into Colossal, but I don't know. Maybe you do because you don't want the Aqua Jet to go off. But then it's like if they Rage Powder and we end up getting the Aqua Jet off, it, we're in such a good spot turn 1. Okay, it's Raichu Evil Talk. That's actually even better for us. Like, because you can't fake out the... Uh, Colossal right now. Or sorry, you can't fake out the Dragonite because of inner, inner Focus. So like, that's one of the reasons why this Dragonite is such a cool partner for Colossal. So, we're just going to go Max, we're going to Vocal it here, into Evil Tall, and Soul Aqua Jet. Now there is merit to targeting Raichu, but uh, let's, let's actually double check. My opponent doesn't have a single Rock Resist on this team, so like, even in the worst case, which is like Evil Tall's, I don't know, weakness policy and protects. Actually, the worst case is probably Max Guard Evil Tall and then Nuzzle? Eh, even that's not that bad though. So I'm just going to go straight away for the self Aqua Jet here. I think if you're my opponent, you probably just try to fake out the uh, Dragonite. But yeah, this is why this Dragonite's really interesting. With Inner Focus and with Aqua Jet and Safety Goggles, you are actually going to often get that, uh, you know, Steam Engine Weakness Policy combo off. They're going to max first, so I think this is really, really good for us. Um, assuming they're not max guarding and we get this policy off, this honestly might just be like game over on turn one. So let's see. And once again, that's the thing about Colossal, right? If you uh, lead properly and your opponent doesn't have a great answer to it, it can be really, really strong. But the cool thing about this Dragonite is that it's very different from any kind of Colossal partner we've seen previously. That being said, you know, I want to give people credit. Dragonite was occasionally a Colossal partner in, you know, Series 5 or Series 6, but not nearly as common as Urshifu or Dragapult. So I think at this point, everyone knows how to at least what to expect from Urshifu Colossal or Dragapult Colossal, but Dragonite Colossal is not exactly a super meta combination. So, let's see. I'm expecting just Fake Out here. <laughs> Beautiful. So, the Inner Focus prevents us from flinching. We get that Weakness Policy activation off. You know, Aqua Jet still does a sizable amount here because uh, Dragonite's actually, you know, got decent attack. But, most importantly, we get the Steam Engine. We get the Policy off. If they're a Solvest Evil Tull, they might survive this. But if you're a Salvage, you're not doing much damage in return. And then like, now I just have uh, Colossal activated already. And that just one shots. Yeah. So that is the beauty of Dragonite plus, plus Colossal. Couldn't have really asked for a better first game to show off this combination. And so, like, I think this is a really interesting team because you're, all, you're pretty much always going to be maxing the Colossal or the Venusaur. But that's exactly what you want on a Zacian team, right? Obviously, you can't Dynamax Zacian, so you want to support it with really strong Pokemon that can Dynamax. And Venusaur and, you know, Colossal were some of the best max options in the previous formats. Continues to be the case here. Uh, Venusaur is also interesting as a max option in this format just because I feel like, you know, weather isn't nearly as common as maybe a couple of months ago. You do have Kyogre, but that's that's pretty much it. Like, you know, Tyranitar is not really around. And... In the Kyogre matchup, you certainly have answers against it too. So yeah, I think it's pretty much impossible for my opponent to come back from this turn one. And that's the beauty of Dragonite Colossal if you can lead, uh, if, you, if you're lucky enough to, you know, get the right lead. Um, and the, the Inner Focus obviously comes up huge for us. Honestly, even if Inner Focus like wasn't a thing here, I don't, I think we'd actually still be in a pretty good spot because I don't think you'd one-shot Dragonite there. So I could just self Aqua Jet the next turn, but uh being able to like that's why dynamax is really interesting as kind of an answer against you know um hold on, what do i want to do here let me just think this turn through first i think it's just max flare set up the sun that should one shot the raichu you you can't knock us out and then just dueling beat for damage on the top of Fini. yeah um well i guess vocal it down to raichu is also no 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 uh yeah i, I ended up flaring right do they have any switch ins I, I really don't think they have any options at this point like that's just such a good turn one that often just will win you the game. Uh, my opponent didn't get anything off their Dynamax, and they're staring down a fully activated Colossal. So, yeah. They're going to go for a Protect. That's totally fine. That's even better for us, because it means we don't risk taking any damage this turn. And I set up the Sun, so I can just Max Quake next turn. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Colossal is interesting, because it does have a pretty favorable matchup, matchup into a lot of the meta, meta standard restricteds. Uh, you know, for example, like some of the steel types like Zacian, Evil Tull is pretty common as well. Uh, that's something we're going to be featuring the next week on this channel as well. So yeah, uh, like Colossal can just absolutely, you know, smash through teams. Um, so yeah, uh, and like Zacian is a really good late game sweeper. And if you, you know, do snowball with Dragonite Colossal early, Zacian should be able to just like close up games pretty easily often. So Heatran comes out for my opponent. That's fine. We've got Zacian and Venusaur in the back, which is perfect. Shookaberry is probably likely here. 
um, on the Heatran. I think I'm down to just Max Quake and Dual Wing Beat into the Tapu Fini. It just protected last turn, so we can go for a double. Get a special defense boost guaranteed here. Fini's not really like a huge offensive threat, I suppose. Um, but with Zacian with close combat and Venusaur with uh, Earth Power in the back, like this is a wrap. So yeah, the, I mean, these four Pokemon specifically are really strong together, right? The Dragonite, uh, Colossal lead, you set up that sub and then Venusaur and Zacian can close out the game for you. But against, you know, underprepared teams, especially if they don't have weather control, you can just go Torkoal, Venusaur, Zacian in the back. Um, and then the fourth one is kind of interesting with that. Like Grimmsnarl could actually work there. So if they don't go for a double protect, uh, nor do they try to protect with Heatran, that's fine. Max Quake there is not going to get the knockout onto Fini, but that's fine. Mainly went for it for that special defense boost. Uh, Vocalic might have actually just picked up the knockout, so that may have actually been the better play there. Um, Muddy Water does come out, but yeah, with that special defense boost and the sun, doesn't really do that much to us. Accuracy drop on Colossal, that's fine. Double accuracy drop, okay. <laughs> uh, Don't be it is going to connect though. Why is Fini so fast here? Faster than Dragonite? And, oh, actually, I guess that shouldn't be super surprising. Yeah. Uh, we do hit on both dual wing beats, which is good. Don't miss that. And they're going to go for an Earth Power, which is fine. So, wow, we actually survived that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we, we just wait for the free switching into Zacian at this point, right? Uh, well, it doesn't even matter. I can just uh, quick attack and Earth Power this next turn. So, yeah, not bad. Not bad. Um, no reason not to quick attack here. I mean, it's probably actually, yeah, I don't want he trying to get a substitute off here in the very small chance it has sub, so I'll just extreme speed earth power. Extreme speed prevents Feeny from getting any damage off. I mean, even if you like double KO us here, Venusaur Zacian comes in and it's just earth power close combat into Heatran. Tabu Feeny faints after this turn after Vocalith. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would say this was just a really favorable team matchup for us. There wasn't much my opponent could do. And that once again is the beauty of kind of the element of surprise. Uh, we actually miss extreme speed. <laughs> Uh, do we miss Earth Power? No, they just have Shookaberry. Okay. Alright, so that is actually still just going to knock out Heatran. Sheesh. Ah, so I could have just max quaked it, but that's okay. And they're going to Moonblast. So Dragonite should be going down here, but uh, Vocalit's going to take care of things. Oh, it actually doesn't even faint. Jeez, he's bulky. Nice. Yeah, I, I think um, if my opponent wanted any shot at beating Dragonite Colossal... It's really tough to be honest. Like I think this is this is just why Dragonite Colossal can be really strong because a lot of teams are just like don't have good answers to it right now. So yeah, um, what could have my opponent have done there? I think the thing I probably feared the most was a Heatran lead. Like you you lead Heatran plus something and then you Dynamax Heatran uh, immediately and then just Max Quake. That's probably the scariest thing there. But uh, they did not. So that was good for us. Like, as soon as Heatran didn't come out as a lead, like, Raichu Evil Toll was also, like, if I had to ask for the best lead we could have run into, that turn one could not have played out any better for us. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, like, had they led Amoongus plus Heatran, things get a little bit more interesting, because I do have to respect the Focus Ash on Amoongus, but then I also have to worry about, like, a Max Quake into Colossal, so I probably have to play a little bit more carefully. Um, but that's why lead matchups against Colossal teams are super, super important. And just as I talk about Colossal, we're actually up against an opposing Colossal team. Okay, Groudon Venusaur. Well, this should be interesting. Um, this should be very interesting. I think Trick Lagging Tail probably has a lot of value for us in this game. My opponent does not have a Steel Resist, so Zacian feels quite solid as well. I just want to double check if this is max speed. It is, okay, so that's good to know. Max speed is interesting because it does allow us to outspeed the Dragapult. Unless you're Scarf Pult. What's my hesitance in leading um, these two? Probably a Groudon lead. Groudon Venusaur, for example, is kind of scary. So I don't, I'm not sure I actually want to lead with the Cole here. Maybe it's Torkoal Venusaur, actually. Uh, Torkoal... Uh, what about... Okay, I don't like leading Zacian just because, like... I want to chip away at my opponent's team before, I think. So Torkoal, Venusaur, Zacian. Grimstar could be value for Trick Lagging Tail. We have Spirit Break, Thunder Wave, Reflect. Reflect seems pretty good. You know what I think, actually? I think it's Venusaur, Grimmsnarl, Zacian, Torkoal. Reason being is because... I could see Groudon as a lead... Even if they don't lead Groudon, I could always pivot out into my Torkoal. 
Mm, yeah, I mean, this is definitely a really interesting matchup. Like, Zashian looks really good here. If I can get it in the right position, I'm just not sure it's going to be that easy to actually get it out in the right position. Wow, they actually just went Colossal Pult. Okay. Mm, that's great for us, right? Because I can just trick your Colossal. <laughs> you think they surf here? If they don't expect the trick, like, I could straight up just max... Uh, if you're my opponent, well, it's not, it's not like I get, I mean, I get rid of weakness policy, but then you still get the steam engine off, but I get lagging tail onto Colossal. Reflect, Thunder Wave, Trick. Like, I, I lean towards just Max Quake here. Do they have a ground switch in? No. Max Quake and Trick. Because if you flare into Venusaur, you also set up the sun for me, and then I can just Thunder Wave you next turn. So, I think I'm down for that here. And I think if we eliminate my opponent's Dynamax, well, I suppose they'll probably have Groudon in the back, so Zacian is still not, like, a guaranteed win. My hope was to knock out Groudon early, because then Zacian just cleans up in the late game. But I think this is still okay. Especially because I have Reflect on this uh, Grimmsnarl as well. So they did max. I mean, if we were a Jack button here... <laughs> I think it would just be over on uh, turn one, but we're not, obviously. All right, glad Dragonite Colossal put in a lot of work there, though. So we'll also get a special defense boost, which is nice. Um, and after Surf, I honestly can't help but wonder whether or not Life or Max Quick just one shots. Okay, nice. So we get the full incense and we take away the weakness policy. More importantly, it was to take away the policy, but lag lagging tail is helpful. Ooh, they actually light screen. Okay, I don't mind that. Um, that means you don't get Steam Engine off, and you already committed your Dynamax to Cole, so I already take a took away your policy. Max Quake should still do a good amount of damage here. Yeah, it's a 2 KO. Nice. Okay, great. So that's not bad at all. Um, just wondering if there's anything funky we can do with our the, the fact now that we stole their policy, but eh, probably not this ne next turn. And they're just going to go Volcalith, which is smart. You probably go into... Well, you can go into Venusaur or Grimmsnarl, but yeah, they go into Grimmsnarl. So that's totally a fair trade for us there. Like, we don't really take that much damage, and they don't get the Colossal activated. So that's one way to beat Colossal, right? Uh, take away its weakness policy so that it doesn't get set up. So that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm happy about that turn one. Question is what we want to do this next turn. I think Colossal protecting here is definitely a possibility. I think I don't mind going for Vine Lash on a Dragapult and a Sparrow Break in this position. Uh, if you knock out the Grimmsnarl, so be it. But I could definitely see Colossal Max Guarding here. I could also see an ally switch, which could be interesting. But I just want the Vine Lash, because Colossal is going to be fainting next turn, uh, most likely. And even if they don't max guard here, like, it's fine. What, what are you going to do? Yeah, and they max guard, exactly. Because uh, it's like, even in the worst case, you probably maybe flare. Okay, they get dual screens up, which is, uh, I mean, kind of scary. But, like, the thing is, your screens won't protect you against the Vine Lash, so that's helpful. Or, or it'll prevent you from the damage, but not the residual effects, right? Um... So we're in a really, really good spot right now because we should just go up 4-2 and then we'll have late game Zacian, which is also really good. Now, the downside is that my opponent did set up that Reflex, so Zacian won't be like as strong as I would prefer, but... Ooh, is that in Vine Lash KO range? That is super close. Ooh, hangs on with the Sliver. Okay. Uh, but it's going to faint after this next turn, and then I'll get two ticks of Vine Lash on both of my opponent's Pokemon in the back, which is great. And I can take this opportunity to set up Reflect. Uh, and it's likely I can even steal away one of my opponent's item and, you know, trick it a weakness policy onto it. So here, um, I think we just max Quake, guarantee the knockout onto Colossal, and go for a Reflect, which helps us against the Groudon in this late game. And then what do I have in the back? I've got Torkoal, and I've got Zacian. Now that Torkoal is valuable because it will let me get a Yawn off, and uh, Eruption's pretty good as well. Uh, I actually go for Surf. That's interesting. Oh, it's activate Steam Engine. Oh, but it doesn't matter because I already tricked onto you, so... Yeah, I don't think that really does much. But they probably didn't have a better attack to go for, I'm guessing. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Surf will with dual screens, likely. And so they were like, might as well Surf. This was interesting because I definitely could have gone Dragonite plus Cole. If I go Dragonite Colossal, what do I do turn one? Probably just Surf. The question is whether or not Max Quake at plus two special attack knocks out Dragapult. Given that it's likely and a little bit bulky, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and I didn't really want to play the Colossal versus Colossal mirror match right from turn one. So, yeah. So this is great, right? We're up to four. Our opponent's Dynamax is over. Ours is over. We got Reflect up. We can still trick away an item from my opponent. And I think they presumably... Oh, actually, we probably think here from Volklith. Yeah. Uh, but that's fine.
Because, like, now I just get a free switch in into whatever I want. Um, I think Torkoal's the correct Pokemon to bring in. Assuming... I mean, even if they have Groudon in the back... What else do they have, actually? Groudon, Glastri, or Porygon? Uh, maybe it's Zacian, actually. No, but Torkoal with Sash here is so nice, I feel like. Because I can Heat Wave and Frenzy Plant into anything. Um, I guess my only fear is if they actually, if they bring out Porygon and Groudon. Yeah, if it's Porygon Groudon, I'd rather just get the Knockout, right? Onto the Porygon. Oh, they bring out Glastro. Okay, that's actually probably the worst thing for them to have. Is it Glastro or Porygon? Uh, did they not bring Groudon here? That'd be really interesting. Wow, it is Porygon Glastro. Okay, so that's game over, I think. Uh, well, actually, Porygon maybe survives here. But we get the attack boost, which is obviously great. Uh, and the main reason why I'm pretty confident in this endgame is because I have the Vine Lash damage as well as Focus Sash Torkoal, which means I'm guaranteed a hit onto Glastria, which means I can just yawn it. So, like, what I want to do here is just double up onto Porygon for a KO. Um, so I think I'm just going to Frenzy Plant and Close Combat here. I don't know if Sludge Bomb, Close Combat, and Vine Lash is enough to pick up the knockout. Whereas I'm pretty confident uh, Frenzy Plant plus Close Combat should be enough with Vine Lash. Looks like Sludge Bomb would have probably done enough there anyway, so... Unless Porygon goes for the Mega Big Brain Recover here. That would actually be an incredible play if they just straight up recover right now. <sighs> Did they go for it? That would be such a good play. Okay, they didn't. Um, Maybe that was a little bit risky then because they do recover there. Maybe, I don't know. I, I think we're still in okay shape because I can just close combat a KO you next turn, bring in the Torkoal, and we're probably still fine anyway. Um, but you can see this is the strength of late game Zacian, right? It just does so much damage. Yeah, so they get Trick Room up, but that's fine. Because uh, I have two turns of Frenzy Plant, and I have a Torkoal waiting in the back. So I can just switch that in. Um, yep, and and the main thing here, I wanted all that damage on a Porygon, because if Porygon hangs on, then it can recover. And I the thing in dealing with Porygon is you either want to just burst away at damage. Like, yeah, ideally you put yourself in a position where you can just like burst at it, right? With damage output. Um... So, yeah, glad to feature, like, both of the modes of this team in Dragonite and the Sun combination. Interestingly enough, like, we didn't even use Venusaur for the Sun. We didn't need the Sun in this match, but uh, Grimmsnarl was obviously very, very good for us here. Just double-checking. Are we min speed? Reflect is up anyway. Obviously, we can just Heat Wave. Um, yeah, it's 22. Okay. Yeah. Is there any reason to go for anything else? It's just Eruption, right? You can't knock out both Pokemon here. Eruption and just Behemoth Blade. Yeah. Okay, nice. And that should be a KO. Oh, it actually isn't with screens, but it doesn't matter because I can just double protect. They're going to have horsepower here into Zacian. Yep, for a KO, but that's okay. You can't really cover for both of my Pokemon in this position. I was thinking, you know, I could get fancy. I could go for a Yawn and a Protect. Uh, but it doesn't really matter at this point in the game, especially because we have that Focus Sash. I think it survives the Vine Lash, but yeah. <laughs> How many times is that something survived with 1 HP in the last week? Feels like a lot. Uh, but we can just Eruption again here, and that'll be game over. So, yeah, glad I ended up bringing Torkoal and Zacian in the back. I mean, Zacian is just so good as a late game answer. It's very similar to Urshifu, right? In the sense that it's kind of this late game beast, uh, but... The cool thing about Zacian is that it also matches up super well against Dynamax Pokemon. So in this matchup, it was good that my opponent committed their Dynamax to Colossal early on, because as soon as we... Like, that's where one play shuts it down completely, basically. Um, because they didn't Surf. If they Surf, they at least would have gotten the Speed Boost immediately, and they could have gone for Flare onto Venusaur. But yeah, uh, you know, I can see why they didn't want to risk that, it, it, especially if I have that Weakness Paul uh, or the Trick. Basically, I think what my opponent was trying to do on turn one was cover for uh, the uh, potential Trick options from my end. So it's Eviolite, Porygon, Venusaur, with Sash, Policy, Colossal, AV, Glastrier. Yeah. How much speed did that have? Yeah, min speed. And then Light Clay, Dragapult. Uh, oh, U-turn. That's interesting. So it wasn't Will-O-Wisp. I was wondering what yeah the, the rest of the attacks were from there. Venusaur, Porygon. Surprised Groudon didn't come out in that match, but I, I think the Venusaur probably scared, scared it away enough. So, yeah. Uh, that made my endgame a little bit easier as well, because I thought, hey, if I can eliminate Groudon in the early game, then we can just bring out Zacian, and Zacian can sweep, but they didn't even bring out the Groudon, so it wasn't that much of a threat. That being said, uh, obviously Venusaur is a really good Groudon answer, so 
it's not like I would have been super nervous even if Groudon came out in the first place. Um, but yeah, pretty interesting sets there. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Zacian actually hasn't been the main carry of this game. So I think this is an example of a team. If anything, it highlights how like you don't necessarily need a really strong restricted Pokemon to win a match. Now, obviously, every team should have one of those really strong restricted Pokemon, but uh, that's the interesting thing about Series 8, unlike VGC 2016 or VGC 2019, in which, you know, your team's basically completely revolved around these restricted Pokemon. In Series 8, you have a lot of room to work with. You don't necessarily need to play around your restricted Pokemon, and it, it, with this team, it's more around utilizing Venusaur and Colossal to its maximum potential, and then using Zacian to sweep in the, uh, the end game. so yeah. I'd love to get a Behemoth Blade off, though. Uh, that animation is one of the coolest animations in this game. All right, it's another Evil Tall team. I think this is definitely Dragonite Colossal again, especially because they have dual fake out. So I'm thinking they they'll be confident in just going for fake out onto us. Now they do have a bunch of things that scare Colossal, right? Metagross, Milotic, even Entei to an extent, but I'm not that worried about those. Um, I think it's just the same four as our first game. Grimmsnarl is interesting to trick items away here, but. I think Zashi and Venusaur here is okay. Venusaur is so good, actually, in this end game. It has five... It hits five of my six, opponent's six Pokemon for super effective damage. So, yeah. Just gonna go with those. Um, and if they lead... If it's, like, game one, I, I think, like, I don't know, leading Evil Tone into Colossal is risky. But I think what my opponent was trying to do in that first game was also cover for the Torkoal Venusaur lead. That's why this team is so scary, because, like, it's very hard to cover for Torkoal Venusaur and Dragonite Colossal at the exact same time. Um, so, Evil Tall's pretty, uh, pretty good <laughs> against the, like, Venusaur stuff. Especially if you're Assault Vest, like, I really can't do much damage. Both of those Pokemon take so much damage from, like, a Max Airstream from Dynamax Evil Tall. Um, but, yeah, Inner Focus is just so good here on the Dragonite. And, like, I, I think like, people often forget that it gets access to Inner Focus, especially because, like, uh, Multi-Scale is just so common as its ability for so long. And Dragonite's not exactly even a very common Pokemon in VGC in general. You know, we've seen a couple of Dragonites throughout the years. Uh, my brother actually brought it to the 2014 World Championships, but it's never been, like, a, you know, top 10, top 20 kind of meta standard Pokemon in any of the metagames it was uh, even legal in. So, yeah. For that reason, like, once again, I often talk about the element of surprise and how having some, like, niche Pokemon or niche moves can really give you a big advantage, especially if you're playing on the ladder in best of one, and I think Dragonite's a really good example of that. So it's gonna be Grimstar Entei, and we're just gonna do the- oh, 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 they could be Trick here. Um... Ah, this is- <laughs> if they are Trick, that is scary. Um, that would be scary. Can I get away with, if they're, if they're trick plus, <sighs> full incense is honestly fine. I wouldn't even mind going up against that. I can't really knock out Grimmsnarl easily with what I have, right? So maybe I'm content maxing. I'm actually going to Extreme Speed, Max, and Volklet. The reason I don't want to Aqua Jet here is in the small off chance, they're a uh, Trick plus um, Eject Button. Because if I Eject Col my own Colossal out, that's a disaster. Oh, uh, and, and yeah, the Extreme Speed covers them going for Trick. Uh, in case they are... Uh, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up just fake outing into Grim's, uh, Dragonite, which would make me kind of sad. But, uh, let's see, okay, E-Speed, it's actually really good damage. Alright, they just went for Light Screen. That's okay as well. Um, we know the Eject Button isn't there anymore. So even though they get Light Screen up, like, that's actually not too bad. I just want to play it safe on turn 1. Obviously, if I just went Self Aqua Jet Vocal at turn 1, we'd be in such a good spot. But I don't mind this turn 1 too much, right? Is it ideal? No, but it's still not the end of the world, especially because you consider that we have the, um the Zashian in the back to deal with whatever my opponent commits to Dynamaxing in this game, right? Which we can just Behemoth Blade. So, I think it's just important to cover for the potential of, uh, you know, cheesy Grimmsnarl sets. So, I just want to show it the respect that I think it deserves. Uh, I'm just going to Aqua Jet here now. Um, special Defense Boost. Like, uh, I think it is worthwhile to knock out the Entei. So, I think it's fine to Aqua Jet and Max Quick in this uh, position. Grimmsnarl is not doing much for my opponent right now. 
we know at least they're not eject button. Maybe they're full incense, but uh, at this point, they yeah, we get the Aqua Jet off. I just wanted to cover for eject button on turn one. As soon as I find out what the item is there, then I can play a little bit more loosely, right? So I don't know. We, we probably could have steamrolled this game on turn one if I just actually went for Aqua Jet Volklid because I think that just one shots the Entei. Uh, and then we're in... Oh, wow, that didn't KO. Uh, well, it's fade from Rocks here anyway, but it's a slight disadvantage because I will probably eat up another Snarl, so... Maybe I should have vocal it there to play it safe and guarantee the knockout. Uh, I, I just didn't think Entei could survive that, but it's it's probably Assault Vest. You have the Snarl, so I'm already at, I was at plus one, and you had Light Screen up, so yeah, I shouldn't be shocked let it survive there. That's okay. And they're just gonna go for a Spirit Break. That's also okay. Okay. Not the end of the world for us. We still have Fast Colossal, which is good, right? And we still have Zacian in the back, which is also good. Uh, I can also Thunder Wave with Dragonite, which is kind of neat, but. This is an example of a game in which, like, things could have gone better, but I still don't mind playing it safer. Turn 1 was fine. Turn 2, I think it's better to just vocal it there. I doubt Entei's ever switching out. But, I don't know. If they actually were greedy and switch into Metagross, like, Max Quake into that slot is kind of a game-winning play. I suspect Metagross comes out here. No, it's actually Evil Tall. Wow, okay. Um, I don't mind that at all, to be honest. I mean, we have a pretty favorable matchup with Cole against Evil Tall. They still have to take Rocks damage. The only question is, are you weakness policy with Evil Tall here? Um, probably, right? Because we saw the Assault Vest on the Entei. At least I'm like 70% sure that was AV. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I actually want to just Thunder Wave, make it harder for Evil Tall to even attack through. And um, I don't think we activate the weakness policy here. I think it's smarter to just Max Flare uh, because the... Zacian should deal with Evil Tall should they Dynamax with uh, Behemoth Blade. And they are going to Dynamax the Evil Tall here. So that's what we want to see. So what have we seen from Grimmsnarl so far on the first two turns? We saw Light Screen and we saw the um, Spirit Break. So those are standard. Don't know if that's Fake Out or not. Um, in a best of three, if I were to replay this, I would definitely just Aqua Jet Vocal at Dente turn one. And like given what they brought, oh, they actually Max Guard. That's a really nice play. I really like that. Are you not policy then, though? Because I, I feel like if you were policy, you you actually wouldn't mind like taking the policy here. Uh, foul play. That's also really interesting. And they crit. Not ideal, but it's okay. I don't get the sun up, which is the main downside here, I would say. Um, I do have Zashin in the back. I think Grimmsnarl is close to fainting. Uh, we, we will KO it this turn, especially after Shia Heat Wave. Um, plus one special defense, goggles, last turn of Vocalit, they still have multiple turns of light screen. Entei is KO'd, we have Zashian in the back, I'm worried about Metagross. Um, see the thing is I could just extreme speed here into the Grimmsnarl and go for like a heat wave. I guess extreme speed into Evil Tall is probably the best play, right? I doubt they let me get this thunder wave off and it's... A little bit of chip damage, so okay. I'm content with that. Maybe it's better than Thunder Wave. I don't know if I need this chip damage, but it definitely helps given that I have the uh, Zashin in the back, right? Uh, they do go for Reflect, though. Actually, because of Reflect, it was Extreme Speed into Grim Snarl. <sighs> we miss Heat Wave, too, all right? Not the best couple of turns for us there. Um, yeah, it was Extreme Speed into Grim Snarl. Reflect going up is a problem, right? Because now it means it, you will survive against Zashian. Interesting, they didn't respect the Thunder Wave there. But now I can bring in Zacian safely. Um, this wasn't the cleanest games on my end. I I, I think the, the I made a bunch of small mistakes here that added up pretty quickly. Um, that's okay, you live and you learn. So let's bring on Zacian right now. Uh, if I deny Reflect, I think Behemoth Blade just KOs. Maybe it still does, but I don't know. Evil Tall's really bulky. They bring out Metagross. Okay, that's not really too much of a concern for me. I'm okay seeing that. Um, I think I'm just going to Extreme Speed here and go for the Behemoth Blade. I just think with Reflect up, if I just KO the um, Grimstar with Extreme Speed, then Azashi would clean up this endgame pretty easily for us. So yeah, that was a mistake on my end. I don't know if we pick up this knockdown now, but let's see. This is really strong, right? Double damage, and we have an attack boost, but they have Reflect up. So I, I suspect he'll hang on with a little bit of HP. Never mind, Zashian is insane. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, this is why it's, uh, you know, that's why it's such an integral member of, of, of this team. Um, 
Okay, they stomping tantrum. We could still lose this. Does this one shot us? Oh no, it doesn't. Okay, then I think it's definitely game over now. I think it's fine to go for a protect here and a thunder wave. And you, you might be wondering why thunder wave in this position. Well, Dragonite's not doing much damage at this point in the match anyway. Um. I like subbing in case they actually try to protect. Because Reflect is still up, right? We want to stall out. Oh, it's, it is uh, like Clay Grim Snarl. Uh, Thunder Wave just makes it harder for them to attack. If they greed, I could sub here. I, I'm just going to protect this first time around. Okay, let's see if they protect. It's okay if they do. We still have Venusaur in the back, and we want to stall out Light Screen as well, right? That's an important part of the equation right now. Because once light screen's over, we do have uh, life or birth power. Yep, and they stomping. Perfect. So now what I can do is substitute. Uh, and we're, we're just stalling out screens right now, right? They have two turns of light screen. So by the time Venusaur comes in, given that it has protect, uh, we're going to be in great shape. So let's just do a wing beat here. Sub. And then protect Zashian again. Uh, dual wing beat again. Close combat. Yeah, and then Venusaur with Life Orb, once Metagross is at like 50%, should seal up this game for us. So, always good to just play, you know, to your outs. Or, not even to your outs. I mean, here it's just like playing ideally. Um, we could have subbed last turn, because that would punish Metagross protecting really hard. But I figured even if Metagross protects there, um, it's okay. Like, it's really fine. So, I'm just going to protect again here, dual wing beat again. Well, I guess I should actually just Aqua Jet, because it's guaranteed damage. Yeah. We're just stalling out screens, knowing, knowing that we have Life Orb Venusaur waiting in the back. Uh, what was the item on Evil Tell then? Because I I don't know. If you're weakness policy, I don't think you max guard that first time around. And now that I see Metagross out on the field, I wouldn't be surprised if Metagross is actually weakness policy instead. Like, that makes more sense to me. Um, they do correctly target Dragonite there, so well done. But doesn't matter. Like, the reason why I'm playing safe is because I know I have two answers. Like, as long... The way I win this game is basically Earth Power Venusaur once max is over, right? Um... So now I can just cl uh, close combat and earth power. Uh, Thunder Wave also just ensures in case Metagross is like really funky in terms of speed that we outspeed it. So now there's pretty much no out for my opponent. We can just close combat and earth power and that should be game. So yeah, like you'll notice that I played a little bit more cautiously on turn one. And while it you know didn't necessarily pay out in this game, I think it's important because in Pokemon, like you don't, you know, it's like an imperfect information game. You don't know what your opponent has until they reveal it to you. And so I think it's really important to assume like the worst case scenario, especially when you're using something like Colossal, which does get absolutely crushed by something like Eject Button, right? Uh, eject Button there would have just absolutely demolished us. So I was like, I'm willing to take that trade off on turn one. I do think Vocal thing turn two probably would have been smarter onto Entei. Because um, I did end up eating another Snarl drop. So I'm not sure about that. But yeah, let's play one more with this team today. It's a really fun team. So I hope you all are enjoying it. Um, I mean, Dragonite Colossal just absolutely crushed in the games we brought it in. Sun was good in that second game. I, mean, I wouldn't even call it Sun, I should say. And I think uh, Zacian's definitely the MVP of that last one, right? <laughs> just crushed Evil Tall. All right, Kyogre. So that's interesting, right? Because Kyogre definitely is one of the bigger threats to Colossal. I haven't played the Kyogre matchup at all, so I actually don't know how this really plays out. Um, the other part of Ky Kyogre is that the problem of Kyogre is that it resists the uh, Behemoth Blade from the uh, Zacian, so that's a little bit scary as well. Uh, I don't think this is a good matchup for us, so let's see if we can play our way out of it, because it is pretty scary on paper. Um, also because of the Zapdos. I think Zapdos is also really strong here. So let's say I went with Dragonite and the Colossal. What would I want to do? If they let Kyogre, that's really bad for us, regardless of who the partner is, right? Um, how do I even shut down Kyogre, I guess is the question. Ideally, maybe Trick? I, th I think Grimmsnarl might be the solution here. We ideally get the Lagging Tail onto the Zapdos or Kyogre and then play accordingly. So I think I like that. I don't think I'm going to go Cole in this game. If they didn't have Kyogre, it's 100% a Colossal game, but they, they have Kyogre, right? And that's obviously a, a major problem for us. Dragonite's actually interesting solely for Thunder Wave. I don't know. I, I want Zacian, Torkoal, and Venusaur. So maybe it's Grimmsnarl, Venusaur, Zacian, Torkoal. The problem with this is that I kind of lose to Zapdos really hard. So my opponent could make a big call here. Actually, they don't even need... I don't know. I was going to say, if they led, like, Fake Out plus Zapdos, Dragonite plus Colossal would have insta-won this game for us. I didn't lead Dragonite Colossal, though, because I really wanted to respect the Kyogre lead. So 
I don't know. If my opponent doesn't suspect it or focus Aqua Jet, like, this actually could have been a pretty good place to go with Dragonite Colossal. And I just don't feel great about it in a best of one. Like, I feel a little bit more comfortable with this combination, but uh, there's certainly room. And, like, once again, it's always important to be thinking in this way, especially because in tournaments, you do have to think about those adjustments often. But they went Kyogre Grim Snarl, and I think I'm okay with this. Um, turn one's interesting, though. It's very interesting. <sighs> what do I want to do here? They get a Fake Tears, Max Hailstorm. Uh, I have Thunder Wave. I don't have Fake Out. I lean towards Thunder Wave into Kyogre, Max, and Vine Lash, but like, I feel like there's no way you just let my Venusaur attack you here. I, I would expect Kyogre to maybe switch out. Hmm. I could make a crazy play. I mean, would Kyogre really stay in here? It just feels so risky to me. Okay, I'm just going to Spirit Break and Vine Lash here. I think that's okay, unless they go Fake Tears, Ice Beam. Yeah, they did switch out. But the reason why I'm okay with this is because I still get some decent damage off, and I get Vine Lash off, more importantly. Problem is... Oh, you know what's so interesting in this game? If they have Full Incense, I could take away their Full Incense once I trick. <laughs> I thought so hard about oozing and, um, like, doubling up onto the Grimmsnarl there, but I didn't feel... I don't know. If they actually stayed in with Kyogre and I greeted that, I, it feels really bad, but... It, it does feel, like, so impossible that Kyogre's gonna stay in against a Venusaur, right? So, let's see what Grimmsnarl set they are. If they're just Light Clay uh, screens, like, I'm honestly totally okay with that, but they might be Trick. Alright, they just go for Light Screen. I think that's honestly not a bad turn one for us at all, then. We get a lot of damage on the board. We get the Vine Lash off on the board as well, which is important. And I can... I actually did a lot more to Incineroar than I expected. <laughs> Incineroar's just such a bulky Pokemon, I don't know. I guess my expectations were just super low there. Um, so they didn't Intimidate us. Spirit Break obviously won't do as much, but that's okay. It's actually still pretty solid damage, honestly. Okay. Like, they'll be under half after Vine Lash on the Grim Snarl set. I wonder if Max Quake KOs Incineroar from this range. I don't think it will, unfortunately. Uh, it's definitely Ooze into Grimmsnarl here now. And is there even a point in reflecting? My opponent's team is so specially oriented. It's actually very little value in reflecting. Um, we conserve Torkoal in the back. Okay, I'm down to just Spirit Break for damage here. And Ooze into uh, Grimmsnarl. I can't even trick right now. But we should conserve the trick for whatever Max is on their end. Yeah, they just set up both screens. That's okay. I think that's okay. Because we're going to have a quick lead in this game, and the question is, can your screens actually help you enough to win this match? I'm not sure. Uh, Ooze here. Nice. Gets the knockout on a Grimmsnarl. So we are at plus one. They have light screen up. Probably a parting shot here into Venusaur, so we'll be back at neutral, but that's still okay. Uh, we have one more turn of Max left. And what's interesting here is if you parting shot with the Incineroar, you have to go into something that takes a... Spirit Break and Vine Lash damage. Now, I know you have screens up. I know you intimidated me, but once again, the Vine Lash damage doesn't really care uh, about the screens. So that's good. And yeah, like if you bring Kyogre or Zapdos, actually, you don't have a good switching into Spirit Break here. So I'm glad I Spirit Break. There was very little value in reflecting. They actually bring out Urshifu. Wow. So that's going to take a punch. Uh, that is definitely going to hurt them a little bit. Yeah, we'll take that. I mean, we just got 50% free damage onto Urshifu. And that also, like, my opponent didn't bring Zapdos here in the end. So I can totally see why they were obviously reflect or sorry, respecting the Colossal, which was definitely the right decision on their end. But the thing about Colossal is that the, uh, yeah, like, because of what they brought now, Venusaur has a super favorable matchup, right? So that's obviously good for us. Three turns of rain. Light screen is still up. They're probably light clay in the back. Right? That would just make the most sense. This this still isn't won by any means, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. What I do like, though, is tricking away Kyogre's item here. Um, and Max Quake to knock out Urshifu, because I can see Kyogre Max guarding here, I think. Yeah, I like tricking Max Quake here, because Kyogre is... Well, I guess you could Max Urshifu, but that doesn't seem very likely, right? If I were my opponent, I would actually probably just Max guard Kyogre here. Um, but the trick is definitely valuable, and then we can put Kyogre to sleep potentially with a Yawn in this late game as well. Obviously having Zashin in the back is pretty solid for us, so, yeah. This is looking pretty decent. 
Nice. So they don't max guard Kyogre. That's a knockout. Or not a knockout, but we take the lagging tail. AV. Oh, that's interesting. Um, They Wicked Blow. A double up on the Venusaur will KO us, but we, we move before Kyogre, which is good. Wow, Assault Vest Kyogre. That is not a common item, I have to say. I don't think I've seen that before really too much. What's interesting here is if you max Hailstorm, you get rid of your own rain, but you probably still go for it here this turn, right? Because your goal if you're my opponent is to just knock out Venusaur, like that makes the most sense. Um, oh no, they actually geysered, wow. I mean, that's great for us, I'm not complaining. And now that we have their Assault Vest, yeah, it doesn't even KO us. Yeah, I, I think it's really hard for my opponent to win now, because what I can do is just protect Venusaur this next turn. Um, I'll probably just Spirit Break the Kyogre. I think that Grimstar has done everything I needed to do in this match, which was... My main goal, right, was to just get the Lagging Tail onto whatever was going to die to Max in this game. I thought it would have been Zapdos, but like I said, it's really hard for my opponent to feel comfortable bringing Zapdos because I have the Colossal. So once again, that's the beauty of this team. Very hard to cover for both Venusaur and Colossal. Plus one Special Defense, two turns of rain, Light Screen is expiring. Uh, we'll see if it's Light Clay soon enough. So I think here it's fine to just Spirit Break into the Kyogre and Protect. And then once we Protect, Incin takes more damage. We can bring out Torkoal. We can Earth Power the Incineroar, Yawn the Kyogre. And Zacian in Sun should win the endgame against Kyogre. That's how I've mapped that out right now. No reason to not Protect a Venusaur. I don't want to take a Fake Out. I don't think Fake Out Hailstorm KOs us. Even if it does, it's not the end of the world. Um... Actually, it definitely won't, because if you fake out Venusaur, then I will get the Spirit Break off onto Kyogre. But they correctly uh, fake out into Grimmsnarl, so well played there. And they go for Max Lightning. Yeah, that's fine. Great play, though. They they hard read Venusaur uh, protecting there, so well done. Well done, well done, well done. Um, hmm. It is interesting here if I actually don't knock out with Life Orb Earth Power onto the Incineroar. I'm not sure it's enough for a knockout. But we know it's not Assault Vest Incineroar because Kyogre had the Assault Vest, right? Uh, it actually makes me a little bit nervous that I don't pick up the Knockout here. Okay, so what's my alternative? Um, I, I, I'm just nervous because I have Frenzy Plant, which can actually miss in this endgame too. Yeah, this actually... That was a really good play by my opponent. I'm not sure I needed to protect Venusaur there, to be honest. They... I'm really impressed by that super hard read they made. Well done. And actually, because they set up the... Like, if, if the electric terrain weren't up, I would probably just bring in Torkoal and Yawn. Um... Like, I found a way to win the game, like, 90% of the time. You know, that's us hitting Frenzy Plant once their Dynamax is over, but... If you're my opponent, like, I'm worried about Flare Blitz and Max Geyser into Kyogre. Um, wow, okay, this actually got a little bit tougher because of that. Like, what I want to do here is just sub and Earth Power. I just fear Earth Power doesn't KO Incineroar here. I mean, it is Life Orb Earth Power, but I guess it could be Shuckaberry. <sighs> maybe Protect there is better. Because the Lagging 2 actually maybe helps my opponent here a little bit. I mean, if Earth Power KOs, it's definitely just game over. I'm just not 100% in this uh, KOing with Light Screen being up. Yeah, it actually survives. Oh, gosh. Um, I could have also gone Close Combat Frenzy Plant. Let's see if they Flare Blitz the... They did Flare Blitz Zacian. Did they double up into that slot? Wow, this just got a lot more intense. Really, really good play with the fake out onto the Grim Snarl. This is one if we lose, like I have to sit back on reflect on a little bit because it definitely uh, should not have been a loss. And they correctly, yeah, doubled up onto Zacian with Flare Blitz to cover for the substitute. Like they, they made the perfect plays to put themselves in this, uh, keep themselves in this. So like really, really well done there. Um, it's just got a lot more interesting. Especially, yeah, I, I was like, that was the thing I was worried about, if Earth Power wasn't a KO. They also needed to Flare Blitz and Max Geyser, the Zacian there, so I could have protected Zacian instead. Um, but they read into Substitute as well. So, 
props to them because they're honestly just playing out of their minds right now and that's that's really really well done on their end three turns of light screen which is obviously not good for us we know Kyogre can't protect here uh I think I'm okay double protecting in this position stall out another turn of light screen yeah let's not forget like Kyogre will always attack last because of um the full incense or the lagging tail Kind of inexcusable to put, like lose this one though. Be like I, I I think it starts with the turn my opponent doubled up onto the Grim Snarl because I could have gotten a Spirit Break onto Kyogre in that position. I think what I should have done was just Spirit Break and Earth Power. If you double up on a Venusaur, so be it. Then your Kyogre is just doing no damage, right? Because uh, I get a single Spirit Break off, and that really changes the dynamic of this match. So I think this was a game in which I had a really big lead that I didn't actually need to protect. Okay, they go for Snarl. Um, what's the attack Kyogre goes for? That's a big question. Origin Pulse. Okay. Oh, gosh. Um. I don't think Origin Pulse and Sun KOs Venusaur, so the play I lean towards... Oh, wait, we have a special defense boost. It definitely doesn't, right? They're not Ice Beaming, so do you not have Ice Beam? Maybe that's the case. Because I think I can just Eruption and Earth Power here. KO the Incineroar so we don't get Snarled. And Incineroar is the main offensive threat to Venusaur right now. It's going to be actually a really close finish. It's, it was a lot closer than it needed to be. Um, so even if we win this one, like I, like I said, I, I can pinpoint uh, things that I did incorrectly. Because we had a really early lead in this game. And it's kind of an inexcus inexcusable to lose after such a big lead. Okay, we do get the knockout there. That's good. I mean, if we just initially knocked out, we would have like this would have been game over for sure. But like I said, I wasn't 100% confident in that KO. Okay, so we get Eruption off. It's not really going to do that much, but at least we took the AV away. They did have Ice Beam this whole time. <laughs> oh, gosh. I was wondering why didn't they, ice they didn't Ice Beam last turn, but I guess they read into Venusaur protecting last turn. That would explain it. I think Kyogre wins this. Wow. Well, it actually comes down to Sleep turns now, because I'm going to Eruption into Yawn. And a bunch of protects. The, 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 then that ice beaming last turn also made me like go for. I, I guess I could have just frenzy planted instead. Um, actually, this is probably just two a k. Uh, yeah, it's just gonna two a k o me. Really well played. Like they read hard into my soul, and they they. That's exactly what you need to do when you're behind in in um, a game like this. So. They made two perfect plays back-to-back -back turns. Um, like I said, I thought this matchup was tough, but we were actually in a pretty... Like, this actually feels kind of like... A, like, I, I I didn't think it was a throw at the time, but it was kind of a throw in the end. They could still... No, you actually, you can't even miss at this point. Because basically, the way to beat Kyogre is to use Venusaur, right? I actually have... Like, uh, Venusaur is my only answer against it. The, the substitute on Zacian, I guess, was the other part of the problem, because in that position... If I just protected, it, it could have been fine. But the reason I was nervous about just protecting... Um, actually, it's always protect there. No, what was I nervous about? I was nervous about Venusaur getting KO'd. Because my way of beating the Kyogre... My opponent set that up pretty nicely. Um, but I, like I said, I think the mistake in this game was um, protecting Venusaur when I didn't really need to. In fact, switching Venusaur out there is a compelling option as well. Um... I could have Frenzy Planted. I don't think that would have KO'd Kyogre with Light Screen. And the screens were really good for Kyogre in the end. Like, uh, ultimately, Ky Dynamax Kyogre was really, really scary to go up against here. Uh, and they made two perfect plays in back-to-back -back turns with the double up onto the Grim Snarl and then the uh, Flare Blitz Origin Pulse into the, um, the Zacian slot. So, I shouldn't have assumed Earth Power, Life Orb, Earth Power was going to KO that Incineroar. Especially because, like, it could have shook a berry as well. Um, so what, what could I have done if I protected there? Uh, I, yeah, I think the two main... Like, those two turns, I, I think, like, I just didn't make the best play possible. I, I greeted... I didn't need to greed that protect on the first time around. And then the second turn, I don't think substituting makes much sense. Like, I should just protect there, right? Why did I- what, what does Substitute get me? I was nervous about Venusaur getting knocked out and then me not getting anything out of it. But I also could have just attacked with Zacian there. I think that's actually the play. I think I should just close combat with Zacian into Incineroar, get that knockout, and then force this to be a 2v1. I guess what I was worried about, I was like, oh, like, Torkoal's not gonna win the endgame against Kyogre. 
Uh, but in that position, if they origin pulse into the, or max geyser into Lazashian, you knock out Zashian, I bring out Torkoal, it's Torkoal Venusaur. I, I do have Frenzy Plant. But then you can go for, like, I think Kyogre might still win that, win that end game. Um, so props to them. That was a really interesting game. I think we had a really early lead and it felt like we shouldn't have lost after the lead, but they positioned their Kyogre really, really smartly. And the reality is that Torkoal is basically used solely to set up the sun in this match. If we had Solar Beam, maybe that outcome would have been a little bit different as well. The Electric Terrain was actually really well done as well, because if they didn't set up Electric Terrain, I could have used Yawn at some point against the uh, the Kyogre, but I, I didn't. Um, so yeah, I didn't think it was a blatant misplay at the time to protect the Venusaur, but it, I guess it, ended, it really ended up being a misplay. Like, I didn't actually have enough tools to, to close out this game damage-wise. Um, yeah, now, now Verth Power KO'd the Incineroar. I, I don't know what, what the role is there. I'm guessing it probably is more in my opponent's favor. Like, I don't think it's unreasonable to think it would... Actually, let's just do the Calc right now. Because, yeah, I was obviously surprised at the moment that it survived. And I played that game assuming, yeah, we just get the knockout onto Incineroar with that Life Orb Earth Power. So that was the main problem. Earth Power... I guess, I think we're timid as well. So that's probably part of the problem. Life Orb, Earth Power... They had light screen up. I mean, if you're max HP, max special defense, it does three to thirty-five percent. Now, if you're if you don't have any special defense investment, but you're max special defense, it does forty to forty-eight. Knowing knowing that, and given how actually, let's see what uh, common incinerator spreads are. I know most are very specially defensive. Two forty-four, one eighty-eight is the most common, and then two forty-four. Okay, so two forty-four, one eighty-eight. They were at like what forty percent. Yeah, that Earth Power is not a KO, if they're that. I mean, it's close. I don't know if they were exactly at 40. Like, it does 30, 34 to 40% exactly. So, that was a bad assumption on my end. I shouldn't have, yeah. Like, and I, 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 like, stated my hesitance as well. And so, if I'm not confident in that, then I definitely should have taken a better line of play. At the moment, though, my, my game plan was just force instant to fade and then force this to be, like, a 2v1. Um, okay, the turn they snarled and origin pulsed. That felt frustrating because I, I, what did I do there? I double protected. Uh, I don't think that's the wrong play though. Fake out Ice Beam is likely into Venusaur. They just, they, they made really, really good plays in the end. Like props to them. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, they're, they're gonna have Ice Beam there in the end. I, I guess I could have gone for. Let's see how much Frenzy Plant does into Kyogre. Light Screen's up though, so I don't, I don't think it's that much. And they're probably bulky Kyogre as well. Frenzy Plant, Life Orb. Uh, eh, it does 68 to 80%, assuming they're max HP. That's probably another misplay then, instead of Sludge Bomb. The reason I ended up Sludge Bombing was because they didn't Ice Beam the turn before, so in my head I was like, oh, I don't even think they have Ice Beam, but they did end up having it. So I thought they were just forced to Origin Pulse, because they did it the previous turn, which caught me off guard, but that play on their end, the last turn made sense, because I think they were reading into me protecting. Um, and so... I, I could have gone Frenzy Plant and Heat Wave that turn. That actually might have been a game-winning play. Because Heat Wave should still knock out the Grimmsnarl, and then it's the Torkoal against the Kyogre 1v1. Well then, but then I don't know if another Heat Wave KOs. It's close. It's close. But props to them. I, I think that, like, I'm happy with how I played that early game. Um, it just feels a little bit disappointing, because, like, at the time, I didn't think I made some bladed mistakes. But my opponent, my opponent, like, read into exactly what I did, and that was really, really well done on their end. And I think... Those two back-to-back -back turns, like, we lost so much momentum, uh, and if we just, like, made... Like, those were both, I guess, the worst-case scenarios in the end, and I should have considered that a little bit more. Because um, even if one of the two turns goes a little bit better, I think we probably end up winning this game, because the margin for was, was pretty slim. But in the end, you can see uh, Solvest Kyogre really bulky, even though we tricked away that AV, uh, just as a Dynamax threat. My opponent saw out my Dynamax really well, and then played towards their end game really, really smartly. So, props to them. That being said, Colossal is definitely not the answer here. So we had the right Pokémon, we had the good lead as well. It was just a kind of poor execution in the late game. I guess turn one wasn't even perfect for us because, like, I could have gotten more out of Venusaur, but, you know, they switched into Incineroar. Like, maybe Max Quaking a little bit more aggressively is good because on turn one, I was nervous about Kyogre just attacking us. But if I read into the Kyogre switch in, uh, we can build a really, really early late lead, especially if I end up, like, Ooze and Spirit Break into Grim Snarl. So maybe that's what I would do, just, like, read a little bit harder. It's just risky, because if Kyogre Max is there and, like, Max Hailstorms, I don't know. It's kind of scary, but <laughs> I've been rambling long enough. This has been, like, an hour-long episode, so I hope you enjoyed. I didn't think that last game would take so long, but it was definitely an interesting one. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think it's, once again, as I always say, losses are the best way to learn from a game. 
Uh, and that one, I think, was a game in which I had a big enough lead. Didn't realize that it was one in which like I could have just kept attacking because I didn't think that was the case at the moment. And uh, that Kyogre was a beefy, beefy threat as well. So, yeah. But really fun set of games. So thank you to you all, as always, for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you all next time. All right. Peace.